Hello everyone, my name is Christina and I'm a medical student studying at Newcastle University. So in this video I wanted to share with you guys some of the tips that I have for first year medical students or for students going into their first year of medicine. Um, I've just finished my first year of medical school so I've got a bunch of stuff to share with you guys and some of the things that I wish I knew before I started medical school. So in this video the tips are going to cover pretty much everything from academics to social life to exams to studying and a bit more. So starting off with the first one which is get a stethoscope. I Before I started medical Medical school I saw a lot of stuff on the student room and online saying that you don't need a stethoscope for first year like what's the point you're not going to be seeing any patients but that definitely isn't true you see a lot of patients in your first year and I actually can't imagine how I would have gone to placement and practice OSCEs if I didn't have a stethoscope so I would highly recommend getting one uh, they're roughly I think a hundred pounds from what I remember but I remember when you start medical school they normally give you a discount code to get some money off and like a free engraving so don't buy one before you come have an idea of what colour you want to get and stuff like that normally first year medical students get the classic SE or the classic three. I recommend getting a stethoscope. You, you definitely need one. It depends on what medical school you go to, I guess. If you go to places like Oxbridge where you don't see any patients, then you won't need one. But if you go to a place where you have early clinical contact, so you see patients quite early on, then you'll definitely need one because you'll be probably doing assessment on them or maybe practicing clinical skills on each other. So yeah, definitely get a stethoscope. So my second tip is to make friends with people in the above year groups. So this is honestly invaluable. My medical school thankfully has this mum and dad system where there's a couple of people in the year above and they become your medic parents. So I had two medic mums and a medic dad and they were people in year two, but they're now in year three because I'm going into year two, if that makes sense. And I guess the medical school has done this as a way to make it easier for you to make friends with people in the above years because if you don't know anyone in year two, then it's difficult to like try and speak to them. So this um, parent system really made it easier for us because anytime we had a question about exams or studying or certain topics or certain teachers, then we could just ask them. And so yeah, that was so, so useful. They've been through obviously everything that we've been through in first year. So they have an abundance of information and knowledge to share with us. So yeah, if you guys don't have that system at medical school, then I definitely try and recommend speaking to anyone in the above year in any way that you can. Obviously there's so many societies nowadays and there's obviously MedSoc, um, which you guys should definitely join. So yeah, try and reach out and make friends with them just because they'll be able to give you so much useful information. So in terms of social life, you should definitely get a hobby. I know you, you've probably dreamed about medical school for such a long time and you're probably so eager to just start, but definitely have a hobby, whether it's a sport or, you know, arts and crafts, sewing, anything that you have on the side, definitely keep that up. Medicine is so, so intense and you can't just do medicine and that be the only thing that you do. You do need to have an outlet that's nothing medicine related, nothing academic related. Um, so yeah, you just need to have a hobby. It keeps you just mentally I don't know, mentally sound, it stops you from burning out. Having a hobby is so, so important. Um, so yeah, definitely don't give up any hobbies that you have just because you're starting uni and you wanna focus. Having a hobby on the side will actually help you to do well in your academics. So yeah, it's so important that you keep that up. It's also a great way to make friends if you play netball or football, um, you know, regularly. Um, no, most medical schools or most universities will have like a medics team because obviously your schedule is gonna be so much more busy than everyone else's. So I had a medics netball team that I was a part of. And I think there's also a medics football Football team as well um, I'm sure your medical schools will have a similar thing but definitely keep up with a hobby it doesn't have to be a sport it can be literally anything but just any society or group that you regularly take part in definitely keep that up it's so so important try not to compare yourself to other people so with medical school, naturally, obviously, if you've gone into medicine, you're obviously going to be very intelligent, maybe a bit competitive. At medical school, if you're not careful, you can fall into the trap of just competing with other people, comparing yourself to other people. And it's just honestly so unhealthy for you, especially in the long term. You might think that, you know, I'm really clever. I like comparing myself to other people so I know if I'm doing well or not. But it's just not a good thing to do. And it won't, it doesn't, it never turns out well. People are from so many different backgrounds. It doesn't make sense to compare yourself to people who have gone to really good schools schools or not so good schools or have had like amazing tutors and stuff it's just it's not helpful in the end comparison only ever makes you feel worse about yourself and it's just terrible for your mental health it's just so much more productive to focus on what you're doing and to try and get um, a tiny bit better every single day um, the only person you should be comparing yourself to is the person you were yesterday as long as you're getting better every single day in your academics then that is progress don't compare yourself to anyone else so I have a few tips on studying and the main one and a big one is do not buy textbooks. You do not need textbooks. Textbooks are very outdated. If you absolutely must and you find a textbook that really explains things really well for you, 
check if it's online first because most textbooks are available online for free. Um, I think you just have to search for the PDF. So type in name of textbook PDF on the end and usually it comes up. Nowadays, there is so much useful information available online for free on Wikipedia, YouTube um, and stuff like that. So you do not need to buy a textbook, especially because they're so expensive, so heavy. They weigh your bag down. You do not need a textbook. So find out what is covered in your exam. If you guys are coming from A-levels, then you will be familiar with a specification or a curriculum, which is pretty much all the information that you need to know for your exams in a document. And most medical schools will have like a similar thing. At my uni, it's um, we have learning objectives. So for each lecture, there's like one to 10, sometimes more learning objectives. And they're pretty much just little statements in terms of what we need to know for our exam. So sometimes it's things like learn the gross anatomy of the liver or um, learn the implications of smoking in the long term or something like that. And pretty much those are things that we're gonna be tested on in the exam. So your medical school might do it differently, but definitely if you wanna do well on your exams, you need to know what's gonna be covered on them. So whether it's learning objectives or something else, figure out what that is and make sure that you cater your revision to that. On the similar note of study, you definitely need to keep in mind quality is more important than quantity just because someone is revising eight hours a day in the library doesn't mean that they're actually doing better revision you might be revising for three hours a day but you're getting so much more work done than that person spending eight hours a day in the library doesn't necessarily mean that you'll be more prepared for the exam or doesn't mean that you'll be smarter I'm sure you guys know this, but it's about how effective your study actually is. It's much better to have one or two hours of really focused revision than um, five hours of just constantly disturbed and interrupt revision. So um, if you're struggling with productivity, then I have a whole entire video on how to be more productive and eliminate distractions and just stay focused while you're revising. So I'll link that in the description box below. So in your first year of medical school, you'll probably realize early on, but there is so much detail in terms of what you need to know. This is why it's important that you know um, what is actually covered in the exam, because sometimes lecturers will be telling you about a bunch of enzymes and a bunch of co-transporters and a bunch of molecules that you don't actually need to know for the exam. So number one, find out what is covered in your exam. But number two, don't worry too much about all the details. Sometimes it can be overwhelming to see how much stuff you have to learn and how much of it is kind of irrelevant in a way. It's just like really small details that you're like, how is this clinic? relevant how will this help me treat a patient in the future um, but unfortunately in year one and two you are just bombarded with a bunch of small details that aren't that important but you know sometimes you do have to learn them for the exam so with this tip what I'm trying to say is don't worry too much about all the small details and um, find out what is covered in your exam and focus on that what's most important is that you have a good idea of the general picture so you understand how you know asthma affects the lungs you, un you understand what hypertrophy does to the heart muscles you understand the big picture not the small details so don't worry about too much. Learn about spaced repetition and active recall. So I'm sure if you guys are watching me then you've probably heard of Ali Abdal. He's a doctor and YouTuber. He so he's made a few videos on how to study effectively for exams. He's also made a Skillshare class on how to study effectively as well. Um, so I'll link those down in the description box below for you guys. But for medicine, because there's so much to learn, um, the best way to retain information, so space out your revision gradually over time. And um, when you're trying to actually study, rather than just kind of read your notes or highlight things, try and actively recall them from your memory. But yeah, I didn't do much of this during my first year. I still managed to pass on everything, but I definitely think moving on to second year, then taking on board um, space repetition and active recall will really help me. So for you guys, I think if you can maybe nail this from first year, that'll be really, really good and helpful for you guys. So yeah, definitely try and learn about space repetition and active recall. Don't be afraid to change your revision or note-taking style. So if you watch my first year at medical school video, then you'll know that I changed my note-taking style like two or three different times. Um, because you're going to be adjusting from A levels or maybe a previous degree or something else to medicine, it is quite a jump so you might not be able to figure out how to take your notes straight away and that's perfectly fine most people don't but don't be afraid to change it I don't I remember I had a friend who was like you know I've done all my notes this way I don't really want to change it that note taking style wasn't actually working for her so don't be afraid to change it because it actually might help you in the long run I know if you're quite you know picky about how you want your notes and stuff you might not want to change things but it will honestly help you out so much in the future if you've got a set of notes that really make sense to you and are more efficient than your maybe old method so yeah don't be afraid to change things so try as best as you can to pre-read your lectures i didn't do much of this during my first year but i wish i had normally i would go to the lecture and then um make some more notes afterwards but honestly when i did pre-read a couple of times i noticed that i took on board the information so much better you don't even have to do that much in terms of pre-reading sometimes just 10 or 15 minutes skimming over the notes just to have a rough idea of what it is and then the lecture actually helps you because then it just kind of fills in the gaps and helps you understand it a bit better so yeah definitely try and pre-read if you can it just makes so much more 
more sense. And then it means afterwards you don't have to do as much work because you've already got a pretty good idea of the content. You don't have to worry too much about like, do I understand this? Because you probably already do because you've pre-read it. So don't leave everything until the end. At A level in GCSE, you probably get away with leaving everything till last minute, but at med not even just at university, but at medical school, that is not even an option. Um, doing a little bit every day goes a long, long way, and it's gonna be so much less stressful than if you were to leave everything till last minute. The workload with medicine really isn't a joke. Like it is not funny at all. Like if you were to leave everything until the end of the year to study, like I would honestly be so scared for you because it is so much work. Like it's so much content. Like I do not know how you would cope if you left everything until the end. Even if you left all of your work till Christmas for January exams, if you left that till last minute, I would be so scared for you because it's just so much work. Um, the best way to do it is spaced repetition. So just gradually spread out your revision over time and gradually kind of just do a little bit every single day that will help you so much and my last tip is to join societies as a medic naturally you might find yourself just gradually making friends with a bunch of other medical students because you've all got the same timetable and you're all kind of in the same boat but it's definitely important to make friends with people who aren't medics it honestly just broadens your horizon so much and it means that your whole world isn't going to be medicine because while you're at lectures and studying medicine when you take a break and if all your friends are medics you're going to be taking a break and you know having a social life but all your friends are medicine related as well and you definitely don't want to fall into the trap of all your friends being medics because then it means even when you're um you know socializing and just you know chilling out all your friends are going to be medicine related and it's just like you know you'd never really have a break for medicine so definitely try and join some societies and make friends with non-medics just so that you have some time away from medicine completely and yeah so thank you so much for watching this video i really hope you enjoyed it i'd love to know in the comments where you guys are going for medical school if you're excited to start nervous when you're starting um i'd love to hear from you thank Thank you so much for watching this video um, and yeah I'll see you in the next one bye so in this video I wanted to share you with don't be afraid to change your revision don't be afraid to and you might be you might be